All right, another day, another custom ROM video. And once again, we are talking about the POCO X3 Pro. Now, this is one of our favorite devices on the channel because it comes at a very, very different preposition. Very value for money, good for gaming, and a lot of issues happen with this device as well, right? Well, today we are talking about less AOSP. This is a new custom ROM that has been around for a couple of weeks. It has already had two to three updates. It does come with Android 13, and I tried it for three to four days. So there are several charging, discharging, uh, you know, reports here how much is the battery backup what is the charging speed what are the benchmark numbers how good is gaming in apex legends and a hell lot more so do stay till the end of the video to know everything about this wonderful rom but before we get into the details if you haven't already please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is kalash let's get going All right, so let's see what we have here. This is Poco X3 Pro Yu Bima. So this ROM will work on both the variants, of course. This is Android 13, released on the 5th of October 2022. That's a recent update. It does come with October security patch and a bunch of new fonts. Now you can use any firmware to flash this particular ROM and SE Linux on this ROM is enforcing. At the same time, safety net is passing. So you should not have any problems. I did check that Wido and L1 is working. So those are the basic things that you need to first check before you flash a custom ROM if Poco X3 Pro is your only device. Now somebody asked me in a previous video if my device is not being used. Well, I use it to flash custom ROM test things for you guys. But my primary of course is Pixel 6 for which I'm making an amazing review for you guys. Especially now that Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro are out. Now let's get back to less AOSP. Now, as the name suggests, this is a ROM which is focused towards being AOSP. Now, what does AOSP mean? It means Android open source project and that's what this is trying to do. It is complete Android 13 with Monet doing a great job and a few features here and there which make it stand out. Now, the first thing of course that you would notice in any custom ROM is the smoothness and that gets further pronounced with Android 13. So all the custom ROMs on the POCO X3 Pro B11X and the Redmi Note 10 Pro which are on Android 13, they're doing a splendid job. Recently, I installed Android 13 QPR Beta 2 on the Pixel 6 and looks like uh, it's going to be an exciting time ahead for Android users, especially for custom ROM users. Now, if you talk about the Google feed, it's doing a brilliant job. It works great. It's butter smooth, so no problems reported whatsoever. Apart from Google feed, if you press an old over here, you have this quick wallpaper chooser, which works like a charm on all the custom ROMs. And as you can see, the widgets are present and all these Android 13 widgets are doing a great job as well. Now, at the same time, you have home settings, which is your basic pixel experience launcher and no, you know, not a lot of customization, but it gets the job done. It has been doing that since, I don't know, Android 11 maybe. And if we talk about quick tiles, well, they are in typical Android 13 or Android 12.1 fashion. Monet doing a great job based on the wallpaper color. So no problems there. Apart from this, you don't really see a lot of custom quick tiles. Now, as I said, this is a ROM that is focused towards AOSP and that is what you're getting. Now let's quickly get to settings, which is now at the bottom along with the power menu. I haven't been able to locate, uh, you know, an advanced restart option. So let's go to settings here. Let's go to pout phone. And as you can see, this is Android 13 at its best and less AOSP is mentioned over here. Now it does say security up update is September because I haven't updated to the latest version, but that's completely fine because there is just a security patch and new fonts that have been added. Now the kernel over here is ALN AOSP kernel, which in my opinion is doing a great job in gaming and in overall user interface smoothness as well. Now let's quickly have a look at the settings menu and see if we have any more changes, any things that have been extra. The network and internet connected devices, apps, everything over here seems to be the same, just like Android 13. But you do have the game space over here. And this is not your regular vanilla game space from Android 12.1 or Android 13. This is your game space from custom ROMs. So actually it's doing a great job. You can disable heads up. You can select what type of ringer mode do you want when you're in a game, block full screen, event disable auto brightness along with disable swipe screenshot and stay away now you can use as many apps as you want with this game space and there's this small animation which is a good thing so game space is present and does a decent job now if you go to the battery section you also get thermal profiles which in my opinion is very quick
quick for Android 13 ROMs. For thermal profiles in EOS P, you do have a different sort of a UI and I have seen it making some difference at least if not a lot of difference. Now, while we are at it, why not talk about the wonderful battery life that this ROM has been giving me? Now, I'll tell you something common with Android 13 based custom ROMs for this wonderful device that is the Poco X3 Pro. The standby time is killer on this device. Either I have one SIM card, two SIM card, I am on Wi-Fi. The standby drain is absolutely brilliant. And if you talk about the battery usage over here, you will see that I you know, disconnected it from the charger two days back. Okay, I haven't really used it a lot, but I still have used it for 42 minutes, the screen, right? I ran benchmarks, I tried an Apex Legends match and stuff. So it did use some of the battery, but we're still at 75%. So Android 13 based custom ROMs are not only smoother, they are frugal when it comes to the battery consumption, which is always a good thing. Now for your reference, I do have Accu battery over here. So we can see the history of charging and discharging and that should give you a more accurate information as to what exactly the battery backup and charging looks like. Now, as you can see, 80 to 59%, 16 hours and 32 minutes, 47 minutes of screen on time, 59 to 100 it took just 37 minutes and again 91 to 100 so it's not even discharging completely but one instance wherein i charged the device from like 9 percent to 100 percent about 1 hour 25 minutes now i know that's a little high but understand android 13 is just new yet and there are things that will improve gradually and for a 5160 milliamp hour battery i think 1 hour 20 25 minutes is pretty decent fast charging Remember the device that I'm using, Pixel 6 takes almost one and a half to two hours to charge a smaller battery compared to this one. So battery backup is great. Charging speeds are great. Along with this, you also get the peace of mind of safety net, you know, Wildwine L1, everything is present. Banking applications working fine as well. So no problems there whatsoever. But what about the performance you ask? Which brings me to the point of Antutu benchmark. Now, if you talk about the Antutu benchmark numbers over here, as you can see, we scored 561, 249. Now, trust me, that is very close to what you would score on MIU why it's not a deal breaker for me you know just having 600,000 points of antutu and not having great battery life or not having great charging speeds is not something that i look forward to i look forward to all-round performance and this rom is definitely giving me that we dropped the battery by three percent and the temperature increased by 6.8 degrees celsius which is pretty similar to what a poco x3 pro would do now if you go to the photos section let's see if you have google photos unlimited storage or not right so let's quickly go here, skip this part and this pixel can back up unlimited photos, which is a great thing. Now, one place where I did find this lagging behind a little bit is the CPU throttling test because after multiple runs as well, it did, you know, actually CPU throttle to 72%, which in my opinion is not that great that means you know it's giving you decent performance but it is not consistent so you know let's not talk about the scores there but if we then to geekbench numbers over here let's see what we have so we have 740 single core and 2586 multi core this is again very similar to what a stock mii rom would offer you on the poco x3 pro so you know battery backup charging good uh, as far as performance is concerned, okay-ish because it's like initial 3-4 builds of less AOSP. I believe in the latest October update, they might have fixed something, but they have not mentioned that. If you ask me about gaming, I did play Apex Legends Mobile for like half an hour or 45 minutes. The device didn't heat up a lot. The gaming was pretty good unless we have an extremely intensive fight of two or three squads and then it would stutter and go down to say 15, 20, 25 FPS. But most of the time, say 95% of the time, the gaming was pretty decent. And the installation process of this ROM is something that I've explained in a different video altogether. Now, apart from that, there are not many customizations available in this ROM because of course, this is less AOSP and it is not really focused at a hell lot of customizations. So let me know in the comment section, what do you think about this video? I'll see you in the next one. Till then, keep smiling, take care, goodbye.